It's been five days since Michael Jackson died. Police, joined now by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency, subpoena medical records of at least five doctors treating the star in the weeks before his death. It isn't just Dr. Murray who might be implicated here. Michael Jackson had doctors all around the world prescribing different medications in different aliases. Some of the aliases include Josephine Baker, Omar Arnold. He used whatever really name he could come up with in order to get his drugs. One really important reason I used an alias from because I didn't want anyone stealing his records. Arnold Klein is Michael Jackson's long-term dermatologist, but Arnold Klein gave us a real indication that Michael Jackson might have had a problem with propofol. He called me one weekend and he asked me if I wouldn't administer propofol, and I told him he was absolutely out of his mind. On July 22nd, Police and the feds traveled to Houston, the site of Murray's main office. The criminal investigation just jumped to the next level. Detectives flew all the way to Texas looking for evidence. The next week, federal agents raid Murray's other office in Las Vegas, where they find receipts for five bottles of propofol he purchased just six weeks before Michael's death. They also seize records from Mickey Fine Pharmacy in Beverly Hills, where Michael was a longtime customer. DEA right now is looking for evidence of an improper dispensing of controlled substances. Authorities discover a new twist in the case when they examine Murray's office files. The doctor has serious financial and legal troubles. Dr. Murray has multiple paternity suits against him and a lot of claims of fraud against him. Murray was being paid a reported $150,000 a month by Michael's concert producers, AEG Live, to help Michael sleep. Michael had interviewed at least four other doctors. They all declined because of ethics. They said they could not administer these drugs in a residential setting. Murray was the only person willing to take the gig because he needed the money so badly. Court documents released today reveal the cause of death. On August 7th, the L.A. coroner's office determines Michael Jackson died of acute propofol intoxication, combined with at least two other sedatives. To find out which drugs caused Michael's death, toxicologists examined blood, urine, and bile samples, as well as liver and stomach tissue, and even the jelly-like fluid found in his eyeball chamber. The samples are analyzed by a gas chromatograph, which identifies drugs by separating them into their chemical components. The mass of each component determines the drug levels in his system. Not surprisingly, lethal amounts of propofol were found among all the specimens sampled, and traces of other sedatives were ID'd in most fluids. When you take into consideration the other drugs that Murray did give him in combination with propofol, it was like this lethal cocktail. Experts had doubted Murray's claim that he gave Michael only 25 milligrams of propofol, and the autopsy results support their suspicions. To properly render a patient of Michael's size unconscious, anesthesiologists suggest a dose of about 125 milligrams. The 25 milligram amount Dr. Murray says he gave Michael wouldn't even knock out someone half his size. In my experience, 25 milligrams in a man Mr. Jackson's size even in the presence of these other medications, would uh, not have been sufficient to make him unconscious or develop respiratory failure. On August 18th, Dr. Murray releases his first and only statement via YouTube. I have done all I could do. I told the truth, and I have faith the truth will prevail. Six days later, the toxicology results go public along with a major announcement. The L.A. County coroner has ruled Michael Jackson's death a homicide. This meant that the king of pop had died at the hands of somebody else. Dr. Murray expected to be in handcuffs within hours after the autopsy was released. Murray was shaking in his boots. Coming up, criminal charges loom for Dr. Murray. Next, on Famous Crime Scene, Michael Jackson. On September 3rd, grieving friends and family gather at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Glendale, California to bid a final farewell to the King of Pop. As the homicide investigation continues, several family members hold Dr. Conrad Murray responsible for Michael's death, and they want justice. Dr. Murray, he murdered my brother, and it was wrong. Justice! On February 8th, 2010, 
the district attorney's office officially files charges against Dr. Conrad Murray. Michael Jackson's doctor surrendered today in Los Angeles to face charges of involuntary manslaughter and the pop star's death. If convicted, he would serve a maximum of four years. Involuntary manslaughter is the lowest level homicide that you can possibly have. You're not necessarily intending to cause any serious injury or any injury at all, but there's a failure to recognize that your behavior is going to have that result. Involuntary manslaughter is not something which fits this circumstance. That's just a slap on the wrist. They've charged the crime that they believe they have the best chance to prove. At the arraignment, Murray pleads not guilty. You may not, under any circumstances, use any anesthetic agent, specifically propofol. He is released on $75,000 bail until a future court hearing. The stakes are so high. So there's going to be legal fighting back and forth for months and months. If this case goes to trial, we're not going to see a trial here for a very long time. In the meantime, the California State Medical Board requests that Murray's license be suspended. But he may not be the only player that authorities are after. The doctors who gave Michael Jackson lots of different drugs, and particularly the ones who gave it to him using his alias, they certainly have a real possibility of being indicted. Michael's death is proving to be just as controversial as his life. But that will never overshadow the legacy he left behind. On one hand, you can look at Michael Jackson's comeback as sort of dying on the day that he died. But really what happened was his comeback began. The record sales are unbelievable. In the summer of 2009, you just heard Michael Jackson's songs playing everywhere. So he got the comeback. He just wasn't there to witness it himself. At the end of the day, the music and the dance, that's what will live on. But Michael Jackson's no longer with us, and that's the saddest part.